Morning all. <clears throat> so I'm up early, so I figure I'm going to start off with a news of the day video. Uh, it's possible we may end up with a couple of these today, uh, and then I'll do the preview right after. Sound good? All right. So the news that's making the rounds today revolves around the Buffalo and Boston game tonight, and whether or not we're going to see it played, where John Shannon said, nope, and then 20 minutes later went, yep. So the reason for that is uh, practice was canceled for the Sabres today. Um, they they have contact tracing underway. It's a staff member that's been put into COVID protocol. And again, it doesn't mean they have it. Uh, it just means they're in protocol, so they're doing the contact tracing necessary. Boston, they've canceled practice as well. A player has entered protocols. My guess is they're going to do some further testing and make a decision. But remember... There's fans that are supposed to be in attendance for this. So earlier in the season when they were doing this, and last minute, oh, well, we'll delay it. Oh, well, we'll call it off. Um, it didn't make as much of a difference because there weren't fans coming to watch these games. Now there are. So now the NHL has to make these decisions a little bit quicker, a little bit earlier. So for right now, we're assuming this game's still going on. Um, it'll still be part of the preview, but I... I'm 50-50 on whether or not I actually think it's going to happen. So we'll see. Uh, the Dallas Stars, these guys here, um, got got myself a 20th patch. It's the thing, you, you marry somebody that knows how to how to sew things and you, you're, you're good. You get a bunch of patches for your jerseys, it's like you got a new jersey. Um, so Tyler Sagan and, and, uh, and Ben Bishop, uh, news on when they're returning. And the answer is, it's a long ways off. So... We're four to six weeks away from when Bishop was supposed to, and now it looks like it's probably going to be closer to six than four. Uh, and for Sagan, they're, they're still not skating. There's still no timeline. So for Dallas, a team that's that's had trouble this year, um, it, it definitely has hurt them not having Sagan and Ben there. Or Bishop there. I keep wanting to say Ben, right? Because you think Sagan and Ben together. But yeah, Sagan and Bishop there. And... Uh, not that, not that Ben's played great the whole way through the season, so I guess there are points where you could go, it's been like Ben's not been there. But he was good the last few games, though, so I'm not going to not gonna say that about him right now. But yeah, Sagan and Bishop, we'll, we'll see. And again, it, it, this could affect what they do at the trade deadline and whether or not they feel they need to add. If they think there's these guys are coming back in time to help, they might be like, you know, we don't need to add anything. Might make them more likely to, to make a move at, at their goaltending spot. Like, it'll be interesting to see what Dallas does at the deadline. Because to me, they probably should consider being sellers. But I, I don't know that they necessarily will. They may look at that Stanley Cup final run and say, Hey, that fourth spot of Chicago's is up for grabs. If we go on a run, we can get it. So we'll see what happens. Um, interesting question uh, encountered this morning on Twitter. So I'm going to just go ahead and... Just throw it into this video here about Minnesota's turnaround this year. So Minnesota, who lost in the play-in round to Vancouver in four games uh, last August, and and we compare that team that was kind of dry last year, lack of a better way of putting it, uh, it, it was a tough watch at times, uh, to this, this year's team, which is very exciting. And, and is this more on Dean Evison? Is Dean Evison's coaching made them a contender and helped them get to this fantastic record they've currently got? Or is it is it Kaprizov and his effect on the team? And and again, for me, I would, I would lean towards Kaprizov because of what he has done for Rask and, and the chemistry that those two have with Zuccarello and that line coming out of nowhere. It just, it transforms Minnesota games. <clears throat> it can be kind of a slog, and you're like, well, I don't know. Oh, wow, this this is exciting. And then you're like, oh, okay, the Zuccarello Kaprizov, they're out on the ice. <clears throat> Completely changes the look Minnesota gives you. And I can't remember the last time Minnesota had a player that could transform the team like this other than Gabrick. Again, Gabrick's the one that, for me, was, was capable of doing the same thing when he was a member of the Minnesota Wild, which is not an offense to anybody who's played for Minnesota since then. It's just, it's rare. And it's really hard to find that quality. You're not going to be able to find that on a chart. The ability to bring people out of their seats. There's no there's no graph for that. So, yeah. Um, Kaprizov, for me, I think has been a big part of it. Everson's very, very good coach. He's solid. 
But uh, yeah, Kaprizov, I, I think, has really transformed that team. The only thing about that, too, is goaltending. They've got it this year. Bill Guerin definitely seems to have fixed that, even though the fix, Kakinen was already there. So we'll, we'll go ahead and say Talbot's been good, but Kakinen was already there. So there's a little bit of luck maybe involved as well that he takes over and says, we need better goaltending. Well, you're in luck because there's a new goaltender coming up and he's very good. All right, we'll get rid of the other guys then. Um, Robin Leonard, you know, it's it's a shame Robin Leonard has to come out and say this. So he's revealed that he's been fighting with a concussion. He's got a concussion. It's the third of his career. And when you're dealing with somebody who's had repeated concussions, we know that that means that it's going to have, it can have, doesn't always, can have a cumulative effect. It can be harder to come back. So he's been out for a while and he's upset because there were those that assumed that maybe his mental health has taken a, a turn and, you know, that could be why he's out. And it, it just shows that we can have, we can give him an award and we can talk about yay for fighting the, men, the the stigma of mental health problems. It's still there. It's always there. And once once you come out and you say, yeah, I've been fighting with this and this has been a problem, you're going to have issues. And whether it's, it's, it's media, speculation, fan speculation, it may even be a management thing. Vegas was the one team that was willing to give him a, a long-term contract. Maybe that's part of the reason why he didn't get it elsewhere. Maybe a general manager looked at his admission and said, we don't know. We just don't know that we can long term or are you going to be able to hold it together? So um, I, I feel bad that he has to come out and say, no, no, I have a concussion and kind of frame it like I'm not crazy because for any other players who might be struggling right now, they would look at that and go, well, I'm not going to come out and admit I'm dealing with some stuff too. I'll just quietly deal with it on my own, which can be a bad idea. So yeah, uh, it's, it's a shame Leonard has to come out and say that. Um, on to some good news today. Sedano Chara turns 44 years of age. How rare is it for a defenseman to play in the NHL at age 44? Very. Um, Chris Chelios, Doug Harvey, and Tim Horton are the only other defensemen in NHL history to play at that age. So, and I remember Chelios at, at 44, I want to say at 44, Chelios was sort of not a mainstay in the league. He was sort of still trying to come back. We were like, seriously, Chelios is still here. Um, Chara hasn't had that exit from the league. Boston was looking to cut back his time this year, and he said, nope. And he's proven so far for the Capitals, he's still a useful defenseman. I always thought he was useful in Boston, too. He is not the defenseman he was when he was winning a Norris Trophy here and there, but he's still an excellent uh, defenseman in the proper role if he's utilized correctly. And so far, Washington's done a good job of that. Uh, Connor McDavid is setting the world on fire with his scoring. Uh, 56 points in 32 games. So how many is that? Well, it's the most any players have through 32 games since 95-96. When a trio of players known for winning cups in Pittsburgh did it, Mario Lemieux, Jeremy Yager, and Ron Francis. So... Yeah, 95-96, which was uh, right towards the end of any kind of big scoring that we saw in the NHL as things started to tighten down defensively. And uh, yeah, so kudos to Connor McDavid for getting his scoring and just, you know, uh, 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 juicing it up. It, it is amazing to think that in a 56-game season, it's possible, it's difficult, but it's possible he hits 100 points this year. Is, and I know people are going to say, well, he's not going to play Ottawa often enough to do it. Maybe, but again, Connor McDavid, I've learned not to doubt him. So that's why last year, Dreisaitl had a fantastic year, but I still said McDavid's the best player in the game. And I'm still saying McDavid's the best player in the game. Uh, Jeremy Colleton kind of dropped some interesting information, potentially. Not a confirmation of anything, but he basically says Kirby Doc is doing a lot better than they'd expected. So there's the possibility that Kirby Doc comes back sooner than any of us expected, and we had expected he wasn't coming back at all this season. So that would completely change things. The Chicago Blackhawks are definitely in danger right now. They've started to fall, and it's a tough schedule, right? I did the video on Chicago and on the resurgence, and I said we're going to find out when they play Tampa and Florida and Carolina whether or not this is real. And I think what we found out is they're competitive, they work hard, 
but they're a step below those teams. And so we're we're in a situation right now where Chicago could very well end up falling out. But if Kirby Doc were to come back, even if he was skating at practices, even if he could get out there at all and just, you know, be a part of the team, I would think it'd have to be a boost. Um, Kirby Doc was coming into his own last year in in the return to play. And I I really think that that that, that kid was going to have a big year this year, and it's it's too bad that he's missed the season. So if he comes back sooner than expected, that does change things for Chicago. That is a huge boost for the Blackhawks, and uh, I would enjoy seeing that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. For all your support, I will talk to you again soon.